Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of Horseback Riding 101. We have just finished grooming the horse. Scott has learned how to lead the horse correctly. He's a lot more comfortable and confident getting in the horse's personal space. So today we're gonna learn all about the tack, how to put it on, and then we're gonna get in the saddle and we're gonna learn all about balance. We're gonna learn about the muscles that actually keep you on the horse versus the muscles that we think keep us on the horse. Are you ready? I'm Are you ready. excited? A little nervous? Yeah, definitely nervous. If you I'm missed ready. the first part of this series, go back and watch the first part. Scott learned how to groom the horse, how to lead the horse, and my neighbor is still out cutting his grass an hour later. <laughs> so I am so sorry about the hum that you hear in the background. I can't control the entire environment. The saddle. So just get it under the pommel, and then you're going to get it under the cantle right here. And we don't need this, but we do need this. For y'all. Huh? I'm gonna have you hold the bridle for just a second. Right. This is the bridle and this is what goes on the horse's head. There's all kinds of contraptions here that are gonna help you communicate with your horse. When you are holding your bridle, please hold the reins, the throat latch, and the head stall all together. If you hold just one, the reins are gonna drag on the ground, the throat latch will come all the way out, um, and everything will just get, um, it is exactly where it needs to be, right here, see that, see that? We don't want that. We're gonna keep that right there. So come around here, Scott. Throat latch. Throat latch. <laughs> that sounds like a medieval torture device. <laughs> it's not. Hey, like those old pictures you see, those black and white photos? There's a throat latch. Mm -hmm. Good night, man. All right. What, well, what must do? Just hold it. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't go there. You didn't tell me what to do with it. Just hold it. Right. Here we have the saddle pad. There are a million different kinds. They come in all kinds of colors. I'm not allowed into tax stores because I want one of every color and every shape. And even though I don't ride English anymore, I would buy all of the English colored ones. <laughs> and this is going to go on before you put the saddle on. This provides some comfort and cushion and it keeps a lot of the weight of the tree, which is the, the bones of your saddle. Um, and it's going to help to display some of the weight evenly across their withers and their back. I put it up really high on their neck to start with. Well, how do you, how do you know what's, how do you know where to put it if it's too low or too high? That's a good question. Every saddle pad is going to be a little bit different, but I put mine high and then I actually slide them down to about where their withers are. And I've just gotten used to where this one looks like it should go. The reason that I start high and pull down is to help the hair to lay in the direction it's supposed to grow. I think it would feel so uncomfortable to put the saddle pad on here and then to push it up. Oh, it just makes my skin crawl thinking of it. So I'm gonna put it high and then I kind of push it low. These are the horse's withers. Now, he almost has no withers. Briscoe has a very low withers. But actually, come over here to Twinkle because she has got a bona fide shark fin. She has very high withers. Part of it is just her confirmation, and part of it is that she's getting old and she's losing this top line. She should be a lot more muscular right here. But you can see the difference. You really want the saddle. Your body is going to sit right here on them, but your saddle is going to fit somewhere in between here and here. Let's go back to Briscoe. So like I said, it's gonna go here and then we're gonna kind of push it down and you can adjust it back and forth to see what feels comfortable. Now, you're gonna grab One this. These. I'll hold this for you, <laughs> poor thing. You're gonna grab that saddle. What's this? <laughs> That's the girth and we'll put that on in just a second. I'll put this over here. Okay. Now we are riding Western. Western is a much bigger saddle and it has a horn unlike the English saddle. So what you're going to do is on this side of the saddle, pick it up for the camera to see. There are stirrups hanging down. You're going to grab that stirrup right here and hook it onto the horn. So lower it just a little bit for me. Oh. Now you can pick it up and lift it onto here without oh, it getting caught up under it. Now I'll take it off. Let's talk about the parts of the saddle so that you understand what everything is here for. We are on a flat ring so we don't need a lot of stuff to hold the saddle 
a lot of times if you go trail riding, you will have something that comes here over the dock of the tail, and then you will even have a martingale that comes to the front because when you're going up and down, the saddle can slide. And then a lot of Western riders, especially in barrel racing, they will use a back strap right here. I don't use that because I don't do any of that fancy stuff. I just enjoy a nice calm trail ride. But come in a little bit closer. Let's talk about the parts of the saddle. So if you're wondering, yes, I am talking to Scott, but I'm turning my head towards the camera so that you can hear me clearly. But imagine that I'm talking directly mm, to this beautiful too face. Too hot, <laughs> too hot. Now, here's the parts of the saddle. Both the plane the horn, the and horn. This is, they're, this is, they're the, out at the same time. I ain't that darn nothing. plane. I ain't looping nothing. This is the horn. Very good. Cause you said it five minutes ago. This is the horn, contrary to popular belief, it's not there so that you can always hold on to it for balance. Do some barrel racers hold on to it? Absolutely. If they're if they're moving cows, yes, you can hold on to it because a cutting horse can really juke and jive and slide out from underneath you. But generally, this is where you're going to wrap a rope for when you're roping calves. So you're not allowed to hold on to this today. I'm just letting you know right now. Okay. Here we have the skirt. This is the seat. This right here is the pommel, and this is the cantle. Underneath this entire, this is a circle Y because we fancy around here. Underneath this entire one is a very large fiberglass tree. Some uh, Traditionally, the tree of the saddle, which is what gives it its shape in that teepee um, style shape over the horse's back, is going to be made out of wood. I even have one that is metal and it is crazy heavy, but the, in, in more modern days, they're made out of fiberglass because they are very strong, but also very lightweight, which is a bonus for the horse. This right here is the off billet, and that is what you're going to attach one side of your girth to. You can probably tell exactly where I put the girth on this saddle because it's made its mark. This is simply going to attach just like that, and I like to tuck this in right here, just like that. Come with me to the other side, and we'll attach it to the latigo. Look at that. Look hey, how he's like walking around the horse. Like what that. a good student. Hey, like that girl's book song. She what? said spurs and a latigo. I never knew what that meant. Is that, What's the latigo? This is the latigo. This? Yeah. I make a joke with all my lesson students. You want to remember that this is a latigo. It holds on the, to the girth because you don't want to let it go. Hmm. Let it go. You, wanna, <laughs> you don't want to let it go? I don't want to let it go. I'm sure, I'm sure you're the first horse, uh, wait, equestrian to make that joke. I'm hilarious. <laughs> I'm reaching under and I'm grabbing the girth right here. Now, a lot of people will go ahead and put holes exactly where they want it, but because I use this saddle on many different horses, I don't have one hole for every horse. What I'm gonna do instead of cutting a hole and attaching it right there is I'm gonna tie this. You can kill me in the comments, but you can take the Texas tea out of my dead cold hands. What's the Texas tea? It's like the most controversial thing. People are like, why do you tie a Texas T? Just punch the holes. I don't want 10 million holes in my latigo, so I'm gonna tie it on. This is how you tie a Texas T. It is safe. I have ridden like this my entire life. Have I fallen off? Yes. Was it because my saddle was not tight enough? No, it was because I was doing something wrong. <laughs> All right, so it goes up through here, down through here, and I've seen a few different variations, but once you learn something as a child, it kind of sticks forever. Uh, so this is how I tighten it. I'm pulling up on the left, down on the right, and then he is holding his breath right now. So you're gonna give him a couple of minutes to blow out, and it's going to loosen that girth a little bit, and then you can tighten it again. Now, the other problem with these stirrups is these are made to fit my legs, and your legs are a good bit longer than mine. So we've gotta lengthen these just a bit. this right here. All right. Let's see if these stirrups are the right size. Damn. Shouldn't I, shouldn't I do it? No. Not all that, but shouldn't I take this? Put the saddle on, tie the Texas Y thing. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you feeling? Mm -hmm. All right. Did you watch all that? Did yeah. you memorize it? Sure. This drives my lesson <clears throat> students nuts to undo it all. 
This is when I go and get Starbucks. <laughs> See if you can figure it out. Give it a good swing over. I just like, Whoa. there you go. Hey, real quick question. Does it matter what side I approach? I'm going to put all the stuff on. I tend to stay on the left side because that's where I tie it. Left side is which side? On, on, sorry, his left. You're on the other side. Okay. That's because that was a better angle for the camera. Okay. I'll just take it. You did great. It was in the right spot. I put it high and moved it down. Like <laughs> you moved it down sit. too much. <laughs> that's a good spot. Because when you put the saddle on, it will naturally like slide down even more. Eli Bro was offended. Who, who was? You were. All right, there's one thing I forgot to show you. I don't do this for my little lesson students. I do it for me and anybody else, but I tent the saddle pad. I just push the saddle pad up into uh, the cantle right here and you can see oh. this big gap and it looks like a tent in through this area. That is just gonna help with weight distribution. Distribution is a hard word. Word you hard. Oh, don't do it without me. Good job. Hey, let's go. still going because <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out well you're cute well, hang on don't tell me no. <laughs> do you want to watch the video back no hang on hang on <laughs> I'm trying to remember because I remember how you No. <laughs> was it like this? No, it wasn't. Okay, put it through here Give to me the, the first. right. Okay. No, 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 no. You said you did it to the make, right. Right, but you've got to make sure that this is laying flat the whole time. So it's going to go this way. Joelle, look at how I'm sitting. And then what? And then what? Hello, Miss Purple Hair. so close but I leave this loose and this is my handle to pull down on so I'm gonna lift and pull like that does that make sense and then tighten it once you're done so you lift this part uh -huh. and then pull this part yep. there you go and I think you're good and tight this is about where it should be and then pull this uh -huh. to tighten it very good now I don't really love this hanging loose I know I could probably cut it but I love all this leather so I tuck it in there like that. Hi. Right. I think I did it. Very good job. That was the saddle part. Before I put the bridle on, I want to see if these stirrups are the right length for him. So <clears> we're <throat> going to hop on a bucket and hop on. This is kind of a hard part. I have to hop on a bucket. Can I just get on? John Wayne didn't hop on no bucket. <laughs> John Wayne didn't need no bucket. You can... Why do I need a bucket? I mean, it's so ambitious. <laughs> I love that. If it, He's not even that tall of a horse. So I think you could do it. I tend to use a bucket because I'm not as strong as I used to be. I think so. she's calling me old. What do you think? I you agree. Just make sure this is tight enough for you to 
Now, a lot of people will use a bucket just to protect their horse's back. But if you oh. land properly, if you land properly, meaning you don't need to sit on them like you're trying to break their back, it should be just fine. So for this part, I'm actually gonna talk about footwear for a second. Pan down to daddy's shoes and show the heel of your shoe. So all of cowboy boots need to have a heel. And the main reason is, come up here to the stirrup. It would be very easy for a barefoot or a flip-flop foot or a tennis shoe foot to slip all the way through here, which is just asking for insult and injury because if you were to fall off and your leg was caught in here because they went all the way through this giant stirrup, you could get dragged. Some people have even been dragged to their death. So, so I did hit, ask- it hits this. Yes, that's like a so stopper. Like you're in it and it stops it. Exactly. So the, the mechanics of this is that your left foot is gonna go here. Mm -hmm. Now, usually people will approach the horse in this direction <clears throat> and then give a one-two hopper roo. I have the wrong girth on for this. Okay. All right, I had to switch girths because the other girth I have on him is quite slippery and he's sweaty, I'm sweaty, everything's wet and slippery. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna stand on a bucket. That just helps my back and my knees a little bit. Your left foot is gonna go in. And you're gonna, it's so hard to get up here because you're Untied. Okay, he's ready to run. It's always better to have more don't and then she can edit it. You know what's so funny about Briscoe? Whoa. He is actually voice trained, and so I didn't realize that until I'd had him for a while. But that sure comes in handy when you have no stirrups and obviously no bridle. You want to tie him up? Whoa. Hi, Come buddy. Up for me. <laughs> My favorite. Okay, that was a fun little ride. I am gonna dismount the same way that I got off. I'm using my left leg. I'm gonna put my weight into the left stirrup. I'm gonna hold the horn and then just gently come down. Now that he has gotten a few wiggles out, I'm gonna tighten his girth. And then Scott, I want you to hop on and see if this is the right length stirrup for you. Now when you got on, he took off running. Is he gonna, is he gonna take off running when I get on? No, I'll tie him better. And he really, like he really should have better manners than that, but I let him get away with that, and that's that's on me. Really, I should not allow that. All right. Just land gently. <laughs> land gently? Wait. Okay. Oh, the whole saddle's coming off. There we go. Hey, you did it! All right, Where's I'm going to move saddle? this. Put oh, your foot there. in. What's that? What's that? It's his tail. Oh my gosh, he's hitting me. <laughs> Briscoe, why are you kicking me, man? Putting your foot in the stirrup, you want the ball of your foot to be what is putting the pressure right here. If your tippy toes are there, let me demonstrate, Scott, by putting your, if, if you're putting your toes here, it's really easy to slip out. But if you put it all the way back here, then that's going to actually force your knees to go inward, and that's going to shift all of your balance the wrong way. So we're gonna put the ball of your foot right there. And generally speaking, I want your toes to be up and your heels to be down. What that's doing is that is forcing these muscles here to lay the right way. In English riding, you're gonna ride with your knees in. And what we do is we will lift up the side a little bit. We will tilt and we will sit on the inner part of your thigh. But for one of my lesson students today, I had her actually sit on the outer part of her thigh. I'm gonna switch your legs and that forced her to sit back a little bit. A lot of the time when we start feeling like we're losing our balance, what we do is we tend to hunch over the horn because we feel like, okay, if I can just be smaller, I'm gonna sit right here and have all kinds of good balance. But that is a very dangerous thing because you're putting your center of gravity in your chest. If your chest is ever sitting over the horn, then you're in a bad spot to lose your balance. So from ear to shoulder, elbow to butt, I want a straight line right here. What I have my students do is I ask them to scrunch their shoulders in. Now roll your shoulders out. And it's almost like you're putting your heart on display. Look at how full my heart is of love and my hands are relaxed down by my side. This right here means I'm insecure. I'm not confident. I'm gonna cower down and that throws your center of balance 
way off. So instead, we're gonna pretend to be confident, even if you're not, stick your heart out there and put your hands down low and calm. How do you feel? I feel good. It's like a, whenever he shifts his weight, I feel like I'm leaning oh. to one side or the other. Right. It feels a little like you're gonna fall off. It does, a little bit. So like here's the trick. Not, you know, I don't know. Turn like, around and watch it, her. It feels like if I let myself go, like if I just, like I would fall, like right there. It felt like if I just let myself go. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. All right, Jojo, come over here in front of us. What I was saying was it feels like if I didn't, like, like I'm, I feel like I'm keeping myself from falling off. Like if I just let myself relax, I'd fall off. You would fall off? I mean, it feels like that. I'm sure it's not like that. That's what it feels like. The bigger we get, the older we get, <clears throat> the more it feels that way. I remember as a child sitting bareback, running bareback all the time because so like right I was now. so little and my seat, that my base of gravity was so wide. Like right now. Right now, he's relaxing. Right. So, you so I feel like I'm falling. Like, like if I didn't stop myself, I'd fall right off. Right, so compensate. You probably need a bigger saddle. This is my saddle. So compensate by putting weight in that foot a little bit. Okay. Right, but you're not leaning your, your whole body. What you're doing is you're putting your weight into that foot. Gotcha. There you go. All right, do me a favor and stand up in these stirrups. I wanna be able to see sunlight through your legs. Okay, there you go. Now sit back down. We sometimes think that what is holding us onto the horse is our arms when we have the reins. So to take away their uh, ability to yank on my horse's mouth in their first lesson, they don't get the reins the first time I walk them around. He has nothing to hold onto except for the horn and I'm really gonna discourage him from holding onto the horn because the muscles that are keeping us balanced on this horse are gonna be our core, our legs, and our butt. These are your biggest muscles and they're so much bigger than our arm muscles. So we should really put a lot more faith into them. And he actually, he's pretty jacked. So I know he's got this. Are you ready for me to? <laughs> so what are you gonna do? You walking me around? It, it, it really doesn't feel very sturdy at all. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm not blaming you. I'm saying it's just horseback riding. Yeah. It just doesn't feel very sturdy. sitting way back on your butt, try to sit forward on your pelvis a little bit more, almost like you're sticking your butt out. Yeah, that looks a little bit more confident. Does that make sense? All right, now I'm going to take... Oh, hello. hello. Listen, if you have questions, you can ask Helen. It didn't look uh, confident. It didn't look... Uh, yeah, it looked a little bit... Um, almost like a lazy posture. This looks a lot better. Okay. Like, you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, at any time, you can tell me that you want me to slow down. <laughs> Now, to balance yourself, push your weight into your stirrups. Push down, almost like you're trying to back up out of your saddle. Right. I can feel it, like I'm pushing down. Good. Now, like I said, he's a Tennessee walking horse, so he's got quite a long stride. He's also an ex-race horse. He used to pull a buggy, and he won enough blue ribbons to make a quilt out of. So, he has a big motor, and I have to slow him up down a little bit for Scott. Ooh. Now we are actually going to turn over to Helen and we're going to talk about some of the balances that you're going to have to learn just to give Briscoe a little break since he's already had lessons today. 
All right, when I have my lesson students out here, I ask them to practice their balance and confidence by doing something called around the world. You may have seen this in a previous video. We've done a couple horseback riding videos, but go ahead and show us around the world. And you don't even have a saddle on, it's just a saddle pad. And it is not even tied on or anything. Helen is riding in flip-flops today, and that's okay because she doesn't have stirrups. I would never, ever, 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 ever use her uh, flip-flops inside of stirrups. Yeah, All right, now, I know you don't have a real saddle on, but can you practice standing up? Kick these flip-flops off and stand up on the saddle pad. I'm right here. If you feel like you're going to fall, just smush me. Huh? I'm right here. You can even grab my hand. To go what good balance you've got there wow good girl all right now i want you to turn around and you're going to be riding backwards go turn that way uh-huh wait wait for her to get situated all right now go for a backwards ride my friend this is part of the lesson So what's helping you balance right now? My legs and the butt. <laughs> and your core, all those muscles in your tummy are helping you sit up straight and the muscles in your back. Way to go. I don't think daddy's quite ready for this. No. He probably needs a bigger horse. So thanks for being part of our lesson, Helen. All right, the last part of today's lesson, after learning how to put the saddle on, how to balance in the saddle and sit correctly, we're gonna learn how to put this on. And then in our next lesson, we're actually gonna learn how to employ the reins to communicate with your horse. The first thing I always do is put the reins over the neck because you can unclip them, take the halter off, and then they'll just walk away. And that's so annoying. So the reins are on his neck and this is facing the correct way with the forehead, with the, the brow band and the nose band sticking out. Now I can unclip him because even if he were to walk away now, I can ask him to stop and come back because I've got control. Some people leave their halter on, that's perfectly fine. I tend to not leave the halter on. I think it looks a little tacky, but also I think it bothers their face to have all that contraption on there. So Scott, come here and watch me. You're, you're tall, so this is gonna be easy. This is what goes in their mouth. So I'm gonna guide this into his mouth while keeping this uh, chin strap behind his chin. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm gonna hold on to it. He's really good about taking the bit. And now the, the thing is to always keep pressure pulling upwards on this because if you let go to mess with the bit, it's just gonna fall right out of right, his mouth. Right. So now I gently just pull his ears through like this. I'm gonna adjust, pull his hair out. And then this is the throat latch right here. The thing about the throat latch is this is what's keeping this from sliding off of his ears, but this cannot be tight. So I want to make sure I can fit my whole fist in through here. Do you see that? My whole fist can fit through here. That means he can move his head, he can drink water, he's not choking or his airway is not restricted at all. So that goes like that. And now his bridle is on correctly. There's a million different kind of bits out there. Don't overcomplicate it. Get a bit from somebody that knows horses and that can tell you how to use it correctly. There are a lot of bits that can cause your horse a lot of pain. I think that if you need one of those bits that causes a lot of pain to get your horse to listen, you need to go back to basics and do groundwork with your horse and establish a relationship of trust and respect. If they are not respecting these small movements right here and you need to use pain in order to get what you want out of your horse, I think you both need to go back to basics and start over again. Making sure everything is correct. Nothing's poking your eyeballs. And now, you're ready to try it by yourself? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take it off. The first thing <coughs> you take off is the throat latch. This one's on upside down, which I think is so funny, but it still works the exact same way. Normally, when I'm done for the day, I'll take the reins and both of these all together. Yeah, just one. And one fell sweep. But I'm gonna keep these reins on so he doesn't walk away. So I want you to grab the throat latch and the brow band together. Don't separate them. And it just goes gently over his ears. And now, he'll drop it out of his mouth. Great job. All right, now I'm gonna hold him and make sure he's not walking away. Where are you going, buddy? 
So what I do is I put one hand under it like this and I use my oh, fingers nice. to push it and my thumb is pushing that throat left backwards. I find it easier to do it from behind him like this, but you can also do it in front of him like that. Mm -hmm. And just give a little bit of pressure. He's not got it in his teeth, so I'm going to put my finger oh, right here and wiggle. There we go. There. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, Jojo. Oh, I hear Keith. Really? Is that? That's correct. Make sure. One more. This is correct. All right, Scott has successfully learned how to put on the saddle pad, the saddle, and the bridle. He's also sat in the saddle and figured out how to adjust his weight to get him feeling balanced in there. The next part of our lesson coming in the next video is going to be sitting in the saddle and learning how to utilize the reins so that you can communicate and turn your horse in the direction that you want to go in. It's a really simple lesson. It's a really fun lesson. So make sure that you tune in for the next one and we'll see you guys next time.